Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Barbaric After the Apocalypse. Barbaric is basically a game where humanity has decided to evolve using atomic um, radiated cores that created energy, and sadly, because of this, they started becoming radiated and they all ceased to exist. So you had an apocalypse, which makes sense after the apocalypse. And as generations of animals reproduced, they started to mutate, turning into unique forms and beings and creating their own factions and clans. And they started to covet the atomic cores for themselves. And so what you have in this game is the unique different factions, the riders, along with, of course, their gears or their machines, and their attempts to gather the cores from these large, evil, celestial-type beings guarding these cores. And you're playing in an arena combat game. You're attempting to move with your gear and fire with your rider, achieving the gear and bringing it back to your home base, or defeating the allied, uh, the other um, different types of forms of clans. And if you can do either or, you'll win. There's different unique monsters you'll be fighting, different types of gears that you can use for each of your different riders that you can actually take apart and put back onto the gears. So you have different unique riders every single game you play, as well as gears. And of course, each of them come with their own unique still skill deck. Will you be the one to defeat the other factions in this skill-based arena style tactics game or will you be left in the dust as one of the other factions takes the atomic core off of the board find out in the game barbaric after the apocalypse and explain how the game is set up how it is played and finally my review barbaric while it looks really big is actually very very simple to set up you'll take the main game board and put it in front for all players to see you'll choose your baddie and you'll place it in the middle of the board along with an atomic core piece this is the coveted piece like MacGuffin, as you would say where it's going to go right there guarded by the being as well as the being's minions in each of the spaces presented around the monster. You're also going to have these migrant pieces or tokens that you'll be placing on the V-shaped circles around the board, and you're also then going to have your own unique character. You're going to win the game draft for your characters, your riders, and your gears, uh, formulating a unique custom deck for each of the characters and vehicles that you choose. So in this case here, I've got an owl and a fish, the owl being the rider and the fish being the gear, and I'm going to get the owl and the fish deck. I am going to take both decks and put them next to each other, and so on and so forth each other player. And then everything else is pretty simple. You take all the tokens and you'll place them out within reach of all players. Each player, along with their decks, are going to get two unique cards that are going to explain the game, as well as, of course, two boards that you're going to attach together as well. They come separate and you put them together, creating your unique rider and gear. Start with two tokens, the uh, little cubes here, and place them on the zeros. And then each player is going to get a token of energy and strength, one for the rider strength and one for the gear energy. And you'll do that for every single player in the game, along with setting their gears to the starting one space, the far bottom left. You're going to be turning those gears to that space there. And after that, every single player is going to get a resource. They're going to get... Um, each of these different types, the uh, blue, a silver, and a purple one, which I believe is like oil and metal and food. And then all the rest of the tokens will just be nearby because it depends on the decks. After that, you're going to set up the boss. The boss is pretty simple. You'll have a little cube on the, so the uh, zero section of it, and there's going to have a frenzy level. And the frenzy level will go from one, two, two, three, three, four, four, and five. And you'll just put it around in kind of a uh, U shape uh, going clockwise. And then set the dice next to each other. And there's a couple of decks. There's an event deck that you'll set aside. There's going to be a, this monster deck, which will have the monsters move on their turn. And then you're going to have this one here, the migrant deck. Whenever you gather a migrant token, you'll be drawing one of these guys and doing something unique. And that's the setup of the game. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Place your characters down on their starting locations and select turn order by rolling the die. Playing the game Barbaric is fairly simple as well. And how it works is you'll check the order and you'll start. Now, the first thing you start with is a day card. You'll draw this card and you'll reveal it and do what it says and place it into the discard pile. Then, in turn order, in the day phase, you're going to activate the phases of play. There's the prep phase, there's the action phase, and the upkeep phase. In the prep phase, you'll choose one of two things and then each player can follow you. You can choose to either install a skill on either your rider or gear, or you can choose to discard a resource, whether it be a supply, steel, or oil, to do one of three different things, whether it be reducing cooldowns on your energy and or stamina, or to draw two additional cards from your deck, or to perform a move action. 
after that and everybody has chosen to follow that specific size. So if, if I install a part, uh, everybody else can do so as well. Or if I get rid of a resource, everybody can do so as well. Or I can choose to do none of them. Then you go into the action phase. On the action phase, you'll be able to take an action from each side, your rider and your gear. You can choose to do any one of the three different abilities on either side one time. So for instance, I can search my space for a free resource of the type designated. I could heal myself and discard additional cards to heal more and go up on the first turn marker. And I can activate a rider skill. I can choose to activate an installed skill that I did in my previous pet phase if I have one. And I can basically do whatever it is. It might be doing damage, it might be moving, it might be teleporting. Might be teleporting and moving and attacking, all kinds of different things. Whenever I use a skill on my rider side, I will increase my health and stamina by one tick. And as I do that, I'm going to potentially gain mastery if I reach the star symbol, and I'll also gain additional stamina when I reach the stamina plus two, and then plus three, and then plus four. In general though, it's going to move your health and your shield up based on the different skills that you use. On the gear side, I'm going to either A, move, B, I can maintain, which is basically increasing my shield and moving up on the first turn marker, or I can activate a gear skill. So if I previously installed a gear skill or a vehicle skill, I can use that with one of my energy tokens and do whatever it says and increase my energy track, my shield up by bump one. And also once again, I can gain additional energy and I can gain a unique gear mastery token at a certain point placing them in one of the two slots based on whether or not I increase my energy or my stamina. And then after I have taken one of each action with my tokens, I'll flip each token over based on the action I use and I'll place it on the action, meaning that they have been exhausted. And my turn is going to end by doing my upkeep. On my upkeep, I can either A, draw a card for each side, or B, I can flip over my tokens for each side. So and I can do any combination thereof. So if I want, I can choose to get myself back a stamina and an energy, or I could choose to draw two cards, etc, etc. If I have no energy or stamina, I must refresh at least one each. Um, and then we'll move on to the next player and they'll take the same prep phases. They will do the same thing. They will choose to either install a skill or to use a resource. Everyone will follow. They will take their actions on either side and then they're going to go to their upkeep. That will happen until all players have done that, usually in a four player game, each player. And then you're gonna draw an event card and go to the night phase. You'll flip the card over, read the night, discard the card and move on and do the exact same thing. Followed up finally by the monster and the monster is going to activate. It'll have a monster phase of its own. You'll draw a monster card, you'll read the card and do what it says. Move the monster, attack. That's generally what it will say. Then the minions will activate. Move and attack. Minions don't attack to begin with, or don't, don't move to begin with, but they will attack adjacent spaces. All minions have one HP. The monster has zero HP. Um, it can't be killed basically is what I'm saying. <laughs> and then you're going to go ahead and respawn minions based on the number of players placing them in the spots where they're supposed to be located. And in this case, they're supposed to be located on these little nests there. And then you're going to up the frenzy level. Clockwise order from one to five, you will get rid of the closest token on the monster's frenzy level, giving the monster and the minions additional bonus abilities as the game moves on. And this will happen whenever the monster frenzies or whenever the monster has a phase, which is gonna be every time the monster has a phase. <laughs> um, and then the game will just continue from there. And there's a couple unique rules to the game, but that is how the game flows. The day phase, draw a card, take the phase actions, the night phase, and then the monster activates. A unique twist to the game, whenever you hit the monster, the monster doesn't die, but you can roll the die for the monster and do its monster reaction, which is usually going to involve moving or attacking in some way, and you can control that movement. If you, do, if you destroy a minion, you're gonna get a bonus resource by rolling the resource die. Additionally, the minion will be removed from the board and you'll increase the monster's frenzy level by one. Whenever you're playing a two, three or four player game, that will be what the monster's frenzy level start point is. So for instance, if I'm playing a two player game, I've killed two minions. What's going to happen is I'll be rolling this die and I'll check the frenzy level. And if the frenzy level is at one, I need to roll a one in order for the monster frenzy, meaning it's very unlikely to frenzy early on. But this tracker is gonna keep moving as minions die and you'll keep rolling this die as the, uh, as the little token here moves up. And of course, every time the monster activates normally, it's going to remove one of these tokens, giving you the ability to roll higher numbers on this die to the point where the monster will start ramping up as the game progresses. And when the monster does happen to frenzy, it'll go back down to zero. 
Other unique things in this game, the entire board has spaces that are more, mostly going to have resources, resources that you can gain from searching. There's also try a question marks, which is going to allow you to roll this resource die or multiple times to gain unique resources. There are spaces on the board that are like terminals or transports that can let you move from one space to another, getting pretty far. And then you have these migrant spaces. You can take this one as a free action, draw a migrant card and perform one of the two actions. You can either A, choose to gain the migrant by spending uh, one of each of the different types of uh, energy and stamina and putting it as a passive ability in front of you, or B, you can hurt yourself and gain unique resources by getting rid of that token, usually pretty worth doing. There's also the atomic core, which is underneath the monster to begin the game with, but it will eventually be moved off of the monster and you'll be able to pick this guy up. And if you do, you can bring it to any outside area of the board that has an arrow to win the game. That's at least one way to do so. And I believe that's pretty much everything in the game. There's a bunch of unique tokens in the game that you can gain from the cards, but you're gonna have to read each card individually to see how they work. And there's a ton of different combinations that you can add, increase or decrease, and kind of function to make your own unique play style with the characters provided here. And of course, there's additional monsters in the game um, that you can pick up on the Kickstarter that is currently available for you. And they, all the players function uniquely as well. But that's the idea of how you play the game. Um, resources, of course, are gonna be used for or when you install parts and there's a certain cost to how you install those parts and you can discard them as well during the prep phase in order to gain unique benefits to them. But I think you pretty much got the idea for Barbaric. Let's, let's get into my review. All right, so let's cover some caveats with the game. Um, things I didn't really talk about, I suppose, are your HP and your shield. When you take damage, you just move them down. If your shield gets to zero, then you're going, or if your shield goes to its point of like breaking, then you'll have to go do your health. And when your health reaches its maximum, you die and you return yourself to one of the spaces on the board. There's a certain type of upkeep. Um, there's a certain thing you have to do when, when you die. It's nothing super costly, but it does bring you out of the board. You'll lose the atomic core, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so you're never going to be out of the game completely in barbaric. You're always going to be able to come back up until one of two things happen. One, either uh, that you kill, manage to kill two people, um, or if you can get that atomic core and bring it off of the game board. It's actually not a super long game. I probably, probably play is a, probably about an hour or so with four players, maybe even shorter with less players. Uh, the game's component quality. Uh, so Hexa House, they did the previous game, Victim the Cursed Forest, and I believe they, yeah, they, they sent me another one too, which is like a double rise 3D thing. Um, so I, I covered their previous game. It was a really cool kind of Betrayal in the House in the Hill-ish game that kind of um, had its own little mixes and matches of different things and unique little qualities. You can watch that video link in the description. Um, and the quality of the game that I got after the prototype blew me away. Their stuff is amazing. High quality, really well thought out, everything fitting in the box. It's, it's beautiful. I, I'm a huge fan of Victim of the Cursed Forest. I think that everything about it is really wonderful. And they brought Barbaric and they wanted to show me this copy of this game. And it's it's just as amazing. In fact, this prototype is even better than the last one, which means the productive production from the game is probably going to be even better than the previous one. And if that's the case, 10 out of 10. These guys get the, these guys, these guys are on par with Simon and the rest of them as far as quality goes. It's just top notch. Um, the art, the graphic design, everything about the art and graphic design, putting the different pieces of the boards together to formulate your own unique character, but also gives you a little bit of a deck building tool and allowing you to choose the cards you want to begin the game with, all really, really excellent. Having a game where you're going into an arena combat simulator, allowing you to customize not only your characters, but how you combine them and utilize their skills with a unique skill system that encourages to you to use those skills in order to gain even more abilities and of course the ability to gain more stamina and energy that you can utilize on your turn uh, is, is really wonderful. I think they really thought through this game. Uh, this is going to be a really cool competitive arena style game. I heard there's like a co-op mode for it as well. I mean, personally for me, I just feel like this is going to be a really, really solid arena style game with unique twists and turns to it as well and things that you can do against different monsters. I only have this one monster, the Komagon, to play with for you. And he alone is really cool. His functioning is, is interesting as well because you're going to be hitting him and he'll be moving towards players based on what you roll. Uh, this board here, I'm going to show you, I'll take it up over here. Uh, it's whenever you roll a one, you'll, you'll be able to move the monster in a position you want. And whenever his phase happens, it might 
potentially stay away from you. Um, you can perform an attack on a target. You can, you can perform a move that attack all targets around, uh, perform a move and then attack with an increase of one damage and so on and so forth. It's, I, I love the idea of fighting a monster that you cannot beat. Uh, and instead of being able to hurt it, you just kind of annoy it away and then have it attack one of your opponents. And then he kind of has his own autonomy as well at the end of every round. And he'll be able, he, he may be turned back around and come in and smack you for doing the most damage to him or, or doing the most damage to a player or moving the most spaces, etc. So he kind of controls himself and he kind of has the ability to be controlled as well. Uh, this game screams customization. It screams theme. All the characters all feel like they're all part of this world of like weird gear, steampunky kind of attached like vehicles that you would just never assume would be part of a thing, but this is a thing and it works really, really well. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, so as far as quality, graphic design, um, the artwork, it's all really, really pretty. Uh, I, I, I am super, super impressed with them and I am assuring you that the quality of this game is going to be excellent. All right, now, gameplay. So in the game, it is a tactical game. I mean, it reminds me of uh, Mythic Games. They said, what is this called? Uh, like Fantasy Brawl? Kind of reminds me of, of that game a little bit, uh, where you have unique customization. You're moving around a board, trying to complete an objective or defeat opponents. And it plays very similar to a lot of those games. So what's really gonna drive you, the point home here is how much you like customization, moving the gears, adding new skills, uh, and, and just the style of the board layout itself. Uh, but it's going to ring true to a lot of other games that you've played before that are like this. Now, do you like being able to uniquely install different skills and, and attach them to your characters and having the ability to have unique decks as well as having the monsters kind of function on their own as well as working with the monster to kind of make it do it want, what you want it to do? And then the multiple different options of winning. This is, this is going to work really well for you. You're not going to die at the very beginning of the game. It's very unlikely it's going to happen. There's a ramp up in the game that starts to go slow and then all of a sudden you're in like crazy mode and the monster is starting to do all kinds of stuff and he's up to the point where his frenzy level is so high that if he hits you he can kill you but other players are out there trying to get you as well it's kind of got that nice little twist to it which i really really appreciated um drawbacks negatives i got let's talk about some of them so when you die you can go back to a space and i believe when the hex core is is dropped and i know that this, some of these rules are probably going to be changed that by the time i finish talking about this video um you can kind of port yourself to a location, a starting location that might be closer to it, and you might be able to take it off. And, and that might be just a small nitpick that normally won't happen. Uh, another thing too is movement. Uh, as far as when monsters move and how they move, like this monster moves to the closest player, does he go here or does he go here when the monster, when the player is in between those two? Because it can make a big difference as to who it attacks. My normal rule for all games is the monster will always move to the place that hurts the most people or has the most potential damage. Uh, whatever will mess up players the most is the space that it should go to, uh, just in case the rules don't specify. But yeah, definitely some clarification in how movement works and whatnot. Um, just light rule things that uh, as reading it through I've watched a bunch of the videos too to make sure I got the rules right um, because there's just some like little clarifications and whatnot that will be fixed I'm sure when the translations hit, hit. but um, do I in my how the drawing cards and flipping over energy based on the rules is different than what I've seen. And I went with what I'd seen and what I had played uh, based on the different videos and whatnot that I've seen around. And I think how I explain it is the correct way, but there might be something in the comments who proves me wrong, I suppose. Uh, otherwise, though, you're going to like it. It's a cool tactical game. It's got a unique twist to it. It's got beautiful artwork, beautiful quality. The, the game's a solid home run in general. I'd be surprised if this doesn't hit almost a million bucks. Like, it, it's going to be one of those games that's going to push itself over the limit. And then I believe this company is going to keep ramping up and doing even more and more games, making them even better, even cooler. And yeah, this one is just really cool. I'd also be surprised if they didn't have a bunch of extra monsters you can get, a bunch of extra characters you can get. There should be, if you look on the Kickstarter, which I'm going to be looking after the video, well, after I edit and do all this other stuff. Um, but I didn't want to spoil any of that. I want you guys to go ahead and check that out and see what there is in store because I think you're going to dig this game if you like this type of game. It's one of those things where hardcore or modern or these type of gamers are going to enjoy it. But as for casual players, while it does play simply and it is a casual style game, there's a lot of thought and complexity to the game. So that might scare some of those players away. All right, that's that's pretty much all I got for Barbaric. There's a ton of other videos you can check out. And as for how to play, I think Meeple University slash The Dice Tower do a really good job of a playthrough of how the, this game is played. So you can understand that. I think it, um, I think I checked it up on The Dice Tower 
uh, the Dice Tire channel. <laughs> um, and of course, Jesse adds his own video too. You can check out for um, Quackalope. He does a good job as well. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time, man. As always, oh, <laughs> that's, that's that's the ending. That, okay, that's all I gotta talk about with the game here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's the ending. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Barbaric After the Apocalypse by Hexa House. If you're interested in the game, you can go ahead and check out the link in the description. The game is currently on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, picture lists, and more. We have a live stream. It's on Wednesdays and Sundays. Wednesdays for video games, Sundays for board games at 6.30 p.m. PST. We play a bunch of different types of games, whether it be Fall Guys and Dead by Daylight and that kind of stuff, or whether it be games like Barbaric After the Apocalypse by Hexa House on Sunday nights. Um, go make sure you like this video, comment, subscribe, hit all those buttons. We greatly do appreciate all the work that you guys do and um, putting in that time and energy to push in that button there. All right.